Most of you in this country know about Antifa. They tend to show up at rallies with the alt-right and conservatives and others. And I have been wanting to talk to a member of or the head of Antifa for a long time. I have with me Daryl Lamont Jenkins. He's an Antifa member and an executive director of One People's Project, an anti-racist nonprofit that monitors hate mongers and fight fascism. Darrell, good morning, sir. Thank you for being with me. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good to be here. I appreciate it. How did you become a member, and why did you become a member of Antifa? Well, I think I've been just—it's just been a case of me doing this even before we even knew what— um, new to term. I mean, I've been doing this for 30 years, and, and it's just been a case of um, wanting to know more about the people that hate us, and then that turned into wanting to do something about the people that hate us before they cause the kinds of divisions that they have caused in generations past. That's always been my mission. And when you say the, the people that hate us, who are you referring to when you say us? I think us as a society, not just necessarily, I mean, you might be uh, alluding to uh, people of color, black people. Yes, that's there. But the truth of the matter is we do have a number of um, people, particularly on, on the right, that have gone after us, gone after us as a society because we are trying to evolve. We're trying to move beyond the things that we have done in the past, the things that we've been about in the past, whether you're talking about um, the attacks of people of color, the attacks on women, the attacks on the LGBTQ communities, um, or just workers in general. I mean, I think it comes to the point where you have to say, look, we are contributing to the society as well. We're contributing to this country as well. And people who have a chip on their shoulders about their role in this society and who um, are the, need to step back a bit. Who are the people who are attacking you guys? You people. Well, I would say um, in regards to what One People's Project follows and what, what People's Project covers, what we do is um, we look at, I said earlier, particularly folks on the right. Conservatives have had an issue with certain communities and certain individuals coming up and trying to build a society for themselves, a new society, something that includes everyone. And so we you... seem to have a problem with that. Why? That's what, what I've always wanted to know. If we are being, I've always been told that if we pull ourselves up from our bootstraps and make what we want out of our lives, we should be fine. But every time someone tries to do that, that isn't white, isn't Christian, isn't um, a, a male, there's an issue. Why? Why? Me, Why? So you're saying that conservatives are trying to keep the blacks, the homosexuals, the transgenders, the... Um, um, non-gender uh, folks, they are trying. The conservatives are trying to keep them down. Are you well, saying that? Well, I would that? say certain conservatives. I would say certain conservatives because we do have conservatives within One People's Project. However, you do have those hardliners out there that um, do, in fact, try that. We, in fact, make it clear that's what they're doing. I mean, we just conservatives. These particular conservatives literally made a federal case out of who uses what bathroom. Why do you care? It is simply well, somebody just going on with their lives. It's another example of just them not minding their business. Conservatives so, in this case. So Obama was the one did that. The federal government did that. Are you saying that the conservatives should be okay? with walking into a bathroom and a man who, uh, or a woman who thinks that she's a man is in that bathroom with men or sh in the shower with men or men in shower with women because they think that they're a woman, that the conservatives should just accept that without a fight? Or boys who think that they're girls, they should just accept that and not fight back? It's none of your business. So it it's should simply be none of your business. If somebody is going to the bathroom, that is your most private area, and you are making it public. We we have conservatives standing outside. This happened just last year. A conservative who, by the way, is not Obama, was standing outside a bathroom door, trying to determine or trying to keep people who he considered to be 
someone who shouldn't be going into that bathroom. We have conservatives doing that. That's what I mean. If you have an issue with it, that's your issue. So if you, yes, conservatives so if you that want that. To, if your daughter went into a shower and some man is in there or teenagers in there, male, who think that he's a woman, but he's really a man, you would be OK with that? If he's a if he's a woman, I'm going to call him a she. And, and yes, I am OK with that, because Amazing. as long as there aren't any laws being broken, we're good. Amazing. He's going to, she's going to the bathroom. She's going to the bathroom. Bathroom. No, how about a shower? How about the shower? How about the shower? The end of it. How about the huh? shower? You okay with your daughter Same thing. getting in? I'm sorry? Same thing. Amazing. Talking with Daryl Lamont Jenkins. He is an Antifa member and executive director of One People's Project, an anti racist nonprofit that monitors hate mongers and fight fascism. Daryl, so welcome back, Daryl. Thank you again for being with me. So, Daryl, you um, and who are the people that Antifa is fighting against exactly? Can you name them? Can I name them? Well, I try to be careful not to name them just on the arbitrary level, but obviously we um, we have a website, OnePeople'sProject.com, where we have a list of rogues gallery entries of people that we have um, monitored over the past. And to be and full disclosure, yourself included. We, oh. have, um, we have zeroed in on you in the past because we've had issues with, with things that you have been about. But that's just, you're just one person. When we're talking about neo-Nazis, we were the ones that were following Richard Spencer since 2006. That's why a lot of people have started looking at us wondering who was this character. We have gone after folks ranging from the Klan, neo-Nazis, to um, mainstream conservatives. So and you have me on your like, list. Hey, Daryl, so you have me. Uh, you, I'm on your list. And what is it that you disagree with about me? My issue with you in particular is I've always I don't necessarily not these days, at least have an issue with black conservatives. But I think in your case, I think you have spent a lot of time trying to make apologies or try to be apologists for some folks out there that have been involved in the white supremacist scene. I remember there was a video from the Prop 187 fight where Martin Francis got clocked in the head with, um, with I guess, a stone or something, and you're on YouTube and arguing with this Hispanic woman, Hispanic reporter, who asked if he was a racist, and he was getting upset, saying, how dare you call me a racist? Here's a black man with me. Well, Martin Francis was with Voices of Citizens Together, or at least an associate. Your friend Glenn Spencer has is the head of that. He is an associate of the Council of Conservative Citizens. I've seen them in conferences that were held by this group. And the Council of Conservative Citizens is a white supremacist group. Well, we were My all we were all out there fighting. Uh, uh, we were all out there trying to get the government to shut down the borders because. Um, of illegal aliens coming into our country and affecting the country in a negative way, especially the black community. And these people came very violent, and they were dressed in red, and they were throwing frozen fro uh, Coke cans and things like that. And that's what hit Martin in the head. And, okay, I'm, I'm not sure what hit him in the head. I wasn't sure. And but uh, that was evil. Let me ask, I noticed that down in Charlottesville, Virginia, the uh, Antifa people were having a peaceful rally. They had a permit to hold that rally. I mean, the alt-right people, I'm sorry, not Antifa, but the alt-right people were holding a peaceful rally. You guys showed up dressed in black, your faces covered, you came with weapons, and you attacked the alt-right. Was that right? Why did you show up? And didn't they have a right, whether you agree with them or not, didn't they have a right to hold a peaceful rally? They were in support of the Confederate flag. They didn't want to come down. Didn't they have a right to protest? Here you are defending the Nazis again. This is what I'm talking about. It was them that attacked. It was them no, with you, the weapons. That's not them true. With, it was them with the helmets. It was them with the military formations. And they've been harassing Charlottesville for a good three months now. You're not answering my question. Your show before. The fact of the matter is, the anti-fascist groups that were there, Darryl, as, 
as you, I'm, no, no, you're I'm not answering my question. We're protecting. We're protecting that um, city, protecting that town, and they were the ones that suffered a fatality. Why the high was killed by the neo Nazis? Why are by, you allegedly by the neo Nazis? I play it safe, but the truth of the matter is, when we came out there, we came out there because we saw that these neo Nazis, who you want to say have a permanent, like that's supposed to mean we can't show up. Uh, Do you they came out there to try to intimidate Charlottesville. So we came out and said, no, you will not do that. There was no violence until you saw those people with a permit shoving clergy around, shoving people who weren't Darryl, lifting a finger to them. Darryl, why did yes. you, if, if you people are mean well, if you're supposed to be doing the right thing, why are you hiding your faces and, and why are you coming with sticks and nails and sharp edges if you are trying to do good? And why are you so violent? <laughs> you know, I, th I think it's funny how you um, have an issue with violence, considering you have defended people who have been about domestic violence. How, how you talk about how it, fighting it, domestic violence is a socialist plot to undermine the man. You're so not answering my question. Violence. You're not so, answering my question. I digress. You're absolutely right. I'll answer the question. Why are you I'm so violent? I'm not masked up. I'm not violent. If I'm violent, it's because somebody has been violent against me. And in the case of Charlottesville, that's exactly what was the case when it came to Antifa. When you saw those individuals, the National Socialist Movement and um, other organizations, the Traditionalist Worker Party, getting into it with people who were not being violent against them, who were simply exercising their right to speak, and their right, their free speech rights. But you're not being it's honest so right now. That's what's happened. Darryl, That's when things happen. Daryl, you're not being honest. You know, I've interviewed Richard Spencer and Bate, uh -huh. Alaska, and those guys, and I don't agree with some of the things that they're about, but they do not have a history of being violent, Antifa uh -huh. guys. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They have a long history of being violent. And so... And now you're not being honest. Uh, you're not being honest, uh, Daryl, but let me ask. There is black-on-black uh, -black violence in urban areas around the country. Why is it that if you care about black people, Antifa is supposed to be trying to make black people's lives better, improve their lives, why don't you go into the urban areas and protect the good folks from the, the good black people from the bad black ones, the young people who are killing children, and who are what's killing you, adults. Why not go in the that? black community and do something about the violence? Well, it's funny you say that because I know a number of organizations that have been about trying to quell the violence in the inner cities, if you want to talk about that. We need, and I'll be honest with you, let me, let me, let me, um, let me put out this olive branch to you here. You have organizations out there. You're talking that, about Antifa. Uh, my father, anti-fascists are out there too. We live in those towns. We live in those cities. We work. I never see kids. you rallying in those towns. I never you see know, you supporting police, the police there. in those cities. See conservatives out there, and I'm gonna tell you something. My olive branch is this: Why don't conservatives just come to those, come to those towns, come to those communities, and start helping out? And start helping out people try to quell that violence. You have ceasefire out there, for example. Daily Show, for example, just Darryl. went. To Daryl, calm up. down. You're what not up? answering my question. About this, I love this story. I love this. I love this commentary because Daryl, calm down. Conservatives need to come on board and put their money where their mouth is. Go to those communities. Why and don't? Why is it that we do not see Antifa in those communities being yes. violent toward the gang members and the drug dealers? Why don't you go in there and do that? rather than changing a pipe dream by going after white people. Let me ask you this. The reason why you don't see it is because conservatives don't look. We're talking about, no. If you were there, we would know about it. You wouldn't care because you don't care. You don't you, care. You don't want... Those that are trying to fight. What are you doing? I know that Bond is there trying to rebuild the family by rebuilding the man, but is that... But people have accepted you... In LA, people have what? what? Hold on, Daryl. Let me take a break. The, the uh, community, the lines are not clear here. Daryl, are you a communist? No, no. I I think that basically, 
I, it's not about, I, I call myself a leftist. I mean, that's pretty much where I'm at. I mean, it's, but ultimately it's really not about being right or left. It's about being right and wrong. And I'm down with anybody who wants to try to do right. That's just my real about it. Whatever political philosophy I may hold, I am flexible on that. I mean, is there I a serve, difference? There, Daryl, is so, there a difference between a leftist and a communist? I thought they're both the same. Well, there's different facets of leftism, just as um, just as there are different facets of right, rightism. So, yeah, there is a difference. I mean, I have seen some very authoritarian communists. I've seen some um, very open rightists, very open um, people on the right. Are you? So, I, I think it's all about the person. It's about it's about who you are as a human being. Are you? And I, and are first, you? You got to do that. Are you a Christian, Daryl? Yes, I am. You're a Christian, so you believe in God. Yes, I do. Do you love all white people? I, I love all people. Do I you love? love all people. How yeah, about all white no people? Problem. I don't have any problem with anyone unless they are bad people. Do you love all white people? Not all white people, but I don't love all black people. I don't love all Asian people. I never met all white people, so I got to be careful with that one there. Uh, amazing. I, it's about the person. It's not so much about what color you are or what religion you are. It's about you. So that's not the issue. You that's said, not the issue for me, to say. You said that my name is on your list. Uh, my producer chat, and he didn't see my name on your list. Did you know it's not there? Yeah. Fairness, in all fairness, I have been working on the website and I have taken down the um, gallery entry. It's a rogues gallery entry that you're in. And it's been up there for about 10 years, but we have been retooling the site. That's the reason why. Um, I was told that Antifa uh, has planned an, a rally in November 4th to go out and attack people, all people. Why is that? Is that true and why? No, it's not true. And I heard your caller ask about that. And all it is is just a series of rallies. It's not, that's all it has been. Someone on the uh, far right side decided to turn it into a conspiracy theory where everybody's going to go out and beat up cops. Who announces that they are going to go out on a certain day to beat up police officers? Who does that? It's not, that's never been what it was about. And eventually some of those on that side of the aisle have realized that's not what it is. It's just going to be a rally. It's happening on November 4th in various cities. I'll be the, in the one in Philadelphia, of course. And um, and in the end, of, at the end of the day, everybody goes home. And that's wanna, the way it's I want to ask this, Daryl. I noticed that in Charlottesville, uh, Virginia, that the cops did not arrest you people, the Antifa people who were the most violent. You went there with the intent to attack. Why was it that the cops were bad, were told to, who told the cop to back off from Antifa and why? Well, uh, if you notice, they did arrest some people. You know who they were? The folks on the right who you keep trying to pretend were just being innocent, peaceful individuals. But you're not the answering ones, my question. But I am mean, answering your question. Why didn't because, they arrest Antifa? Because we weren't the bad guys. Amazing. The Nazis. And who told them not to arrest Antifa? No one told them not to arrest Antifa. Antifa weren't the bad guys. I, I, on your list, you have people like What's, Dinesh D'Souza, uh, Phyllis. Huh? You have Dinesh D'Souza, Phyllis Shafley, Tony yes. Perkins. You have all good people on your list. Do you recognize they're good right, people? They aren't good. There's not, you might think they're good, but uh, the rest of society, not so much. And we make our case on the, on the website. Uh, I would say I would say simply, if people have issues with folks that we have listed, then simply talk to us about it. I mean, we can get into detail about the next D'Souza. I mean, he's a charlatan. He's, he's a charlatan. Not. That's not true. He just talk trash. All he does is just talk trash for his political benefit. That's amazing. And he can back it up. Does he have he a really right to do that? Yeah, so do I. <laughs> okay. I but mean, he that, is that, not attacking that, you. Right. He is not attacking you, but you're attacking him. You're trying to take away his right. He doesn't his know me. Then again, he attacks a lot of people who um he who he doesn't know. I mean, fact of the matter is that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> that so, doesn't mean anything. I, I and let's be fair. If you're going to defend his right, you got to defend mine. Let me ask um uh, because of time here, does it yes. bother you that most black people are suffering 
not because of this phony idea of racism, but the lack of more character due to the destruction of the family. The average black man is not worth a dime. He's not marrying the women. He's not taking care of his family. Uh, they're violent toward one another. You have se uh, 73, 72 to 73 percent of black babies born out of wedlock, abortion out of control in the black communities around the country. Does that bother you at all? I don't know, sir. I think I have a higher opinion of black people than you do, which is unfortunate. I mean, I didn't grow up like that. I mean, I have both my mother and father. They're the two strongest people in my life. Does it bother you that that's happening in the black community? Does it bother it's, Antifa? When it happens anywhere, it bothers me. So, and that's I, why you go out. That's why you go out and try to do something about it. But I'm not going to sit here and say that black people are... Uh, by the way, it's not a phony notion that it's racism. You just said you talked to Richard Spencer. You know it's not phony. And so... But bottom line is, whatever it is that we have to take care of in the what? community, we will take care of. But why are you and, doing that? If you really care about black people, instead of running around the country attacking white people, why not deal with those moral issues in the black community? People. When have I attacked white people, sir? You, uh, you attack uh, the alt-right. You attack Donald Trump supporters. You attack people that you disagree with. And what have they done? What have they done for their communities? No, no, no. Please. No, no, no. Let's, let's be fair now. Their communities they, are not out of control they as yours. As a society. If they want to go out and polarize us as a society, we as a society have to protect that. If you care, by the way, about the black community, work more so with the black community to advance. Advance. It's just that simple. We do it. Why can't you? Uh, amazing. So, Darrell, I just have a few more questions for you here, and I need short answers because this, this first hour is going by fast. Um, I know. I, in I interviewed Richard Spencer, and Richard is into his whiteness. He's into the white people, and I disagree with that. You're into your blackness. You're into black people, and that's wrong, too. W does Richard have a right to be into white people since you're into black people? Your blackness. Yes, be proud to be white, just as long as he doesn't be white at our expense. He once published an article calling for black genocide. That's a concern. And so, once again, if you guys are trying to do well or do good, why is it that you're hiding your faces and you're so violent? And you're turning. One of the reasons that we have the great white hope in the White House is because of the violent attacks that you guys put up on his supporters during the campaign. And people don't like you at all at, because of the meanness and the dirtiness that you are. Jesse, do you know how silly you sound calling him the great white hope? Do he you is, realize how that sounds? He is the great white hope, the greatest president that we have had yes, in a long a time. For slavery. Yeah, I guess you would say something like that. And so... <laughs> And so, Meanwhile, Bob Corker is slamming him as saying he's not a role model. So you have some conservatives in there that are not really too fond of him. So either. you realize that you're turning off people rather than gaining support because of the evil that's coming from Antifa. I don't know. I don't, I'm not too sure about that because no. I can speak for myself. A lot of folks have been coming to me wondering how to fight people like you. Amazing. And I think one of the things that you have to do, I think one of the things that we all have to do is if you do not like how Antifa handles white supremacy or handles the hate politics that you apparently want to defend, um, you go out there and you do what you think is right. Why Antifa do you why do you hide? Why do you hide as cowards hide? hide? I don't know. I, I haven't been hiding, sir. I'm but Antifa put on I, dark masks. Matter, matter of fact, you could see me every year at CPAC. I'm always there. How? Why so, is it that Antifa this year? But um, because I'll be busy doing something else. But um, hell, there's even video of me getting into Andrew Breitbart's face. So much for hiding, sir. Why is it that Antifa when they go? Why do conservatives Darryl, have to? Un... All right, I'm sorry. Darryl, yeah, calm down. This is and I apologize. Darryl, but, yeah. why is it that when Antifa go out to uh, uh, be become violent and attack people? Why are they hiding their faces like little cowards? 
if they were cowards, they wouldn't be there in the first place, sir. Why are they hiding? You don't see the alt right hiding, hiding their faces they be there in the first place. I'm sorry. If they were hiding, they wouldn't be there in the first place. You don't if they see, were cowards, they wouldn't be there in the first you place. You don't see no. that they wear a dark mask. I'm never masked up. You know who I saw masked no, up? No, I'm last talking year? about Antifa. Do you see that Antifa well, mask up? up? Have you called them cowards? Do you see that Antifa? Oh, Antifa is like the Klansmen. They mask up. If they are men and women of good, why are they hiding? The Klansmen have been defending so far. <laughs> my, my final question why don't you go after evil people like Louis Farrakhan, Maxine Waters, uh, Federico, um, the Federico, what's Federico last name? Wilson, Wilson? Uh, Al Shopton, Louis Farrakhan, those people are evil. Why not go after them? Well, I guess we have a different idea of what evil is. But if you're going to sit here and call Donald Trump the great white hope, I guess I'm on the right side of things when I don't go after them. Why don't you go after them? Because they're not evil. They are Especially, evil. No, Donald Trump, your great white hope is evil. When Louis Farrakhan called... Apparently that, apparently that is an opinion that is shared by a lot of people who are going to do something about the folks that you say are good. Well, so, when, I mean, you, well, what, nothing makes Frederica Wilson evil. The only thing she did was criticize Trump for attacking a gold star mother. Okay. If that makes her evil, then there's something wrong with your ideals. All right. So let me ask. I'm a, I'm a bet myself. So let me ask. I don't appreciate that. Uh, my final question: When Louis Farrakhan said that he's looking for ten thousand black men to go out and stalk and kill those who kill us, is that evil? It depends on what you're talking about. I haven't heard the exact quote, and I really can't trust when you say it. So I have to find out what exactly he meant when he said that. If I'm right about it, he's talking about going out and killing white people and cops. Would that be evil? You mean like the three percenters that tried to hold sniper positions? Yeah, it would be that kind of evil. Amazing. But I don't know what he has said. I, I'm going to be very careful with that. I bet you are. I misrepresent who... Farrakhan is, any more to be perfectly honest with you, then I would misrepresent who you are. If I am going to go and defend or attack anyone, I'm going to make sure I have a good reason why. So, so I, I got to be fair and say, look, if you don't like evil, fight evil, but you damn sure better be right, pardon my language, uh, when you do it. So my final thing, when you guys take off, when Antifa take off the mask, stop the violence, go into the inner cities and protect the innocent blacks from the violent blacks, then we would know that you're on the side of good. Until then, you're an evil group. Will you join us? There was a Stop the Violence rally in June in Los Angeles. Were you there? If you do good, I'm, on, I'm you with you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Daryl, for coming on. I appreciate it. Bless you, sir. All right. Take care.